everybody. I'm Stephanie McBride, and I'm so happy to be here to present to you all today. Thank you for showing up for the call. And this topic is a huge um, interest of mine that I have a great passion for, partly because I'm a mom of three. I had two kids in my home, and I had a really tough time during that time in my life, and in postpartum especially. And it took me about 10 years after having kids to find essential oils and bring them into my life. And um, I was able to go back to the original pain and stuff that I'd gone through during pregnancy and actually reverse some of the like symptoms that I was still having 10 years after giving birth. And since then, it's been a really important thing for me to help other women to use essential oils during their maternity, during labor, postpartum, with infant care all the times when I didn't have them and I know now how well they work for people and what a gift they are. So um, if you have people in your life who are having babies or you yourself are and you don't know about this topic, um, then you're in the right place. I'm really excited to share what I know and I hope that it will just uplift your lives and your experiences a lot like it has mine. So today's talk will be on just an intro to essential oils for maternity, but I'll include adapting essential oil use for pregnancy. And then I wanna focus on some of the main symptoms. So in this talk, I'll mention oils for nausea, for feelings of anxiousness, for boosting immunity, also for labor pain, and for postpartum hormonal imbalance. And I'll also talk a little bit about like my top two or three very favorite oils for pregnancy that I feel every woman should have. So to begin with, some of the applications that I like during pregnancy and also talking about adapting use for pregnancy, um, one really great thing to have is a collection of roller bottles. Um, in general, you can use a third essential oil to a half essential oil per carrier oil, which could be any liquid kind of a massage oil. A lot of people like coconut oil, but um, anything you want to use. But that's a really good dilution for pregnancy. And then when you have something like that made up, you can you know apply it on all over your body, to the back of your neck, use it for mood, rub it into your stomach for digestive issues or into your chest if you're having indigestion. So it's just a really handy way to make the oils a little bit more diluted for during pregnancy. And the reason we want to do this is not because of toxicity or anything like that or concern for the oils getting to the fetus. It's really just that women have more skin irritability issues when they're pregnant. So if you use oils neat or without a carrier oil before you get pregnant and you really love doing it that way, um, you just wouldn't want to take a little bit of time in pregnancy to try oils one at a time, maybe put it on your wrist neat and just make sure you're not going to have a reaction that you would normally have um, because of your wonky pregnancy hormones and a lot of different things going on with your liver and, and organs in your body that can cause some irritation. Um, you can also use the oils in massage, which is just has the double added benefit of doing so much for um, relieving tension and stress and helping with digestion and helping with toxicity, which helps with hormonal imbalance um, and fluctuating moods during pregnancy in part because when we don't detox well, we recycle our um, hormones basically. So when you have problems with um, sluggish, you know, lymphatic system and sluggish detoxification system massage is just really great for that. And there's so many oils that can support detoxification also um, while relaxing the muscles. One of my favorites for that is geranium. So that could be put into a massage blend. Uh, another way to use oils during you really don't have to worry about how many oil drops you put in the diffuser. It's not going to be an issue of um, taking in too much through inhalation during pregnancy. And the only time you really need to worry about that is if you're in like a hot shower or a steam room or something and you're pregnant or you have a baby in the room with you or a really young child and that can be too much in that setting. Um, I also really like baths and foot baths during pregnancy. So that's a wonderful gift to give yourself and usually use about the same amount as you normally would, but I would start off with less. So around five or six drops per bath um, mixed in some kind of um, emollient like a salt or a liquid soap. Um, I really like whole milk. A lot of people say that they don't like whole milk, but I think it blends in the tub really nicely. So you can try that if you want a Cleopatra bath with lavender. Um, the other way that I want to just give a little safety guideline about is um, for topical application is with photosensitivity. So 
during pregnancy, we have higher levels of the melanocytic hormone, and that makes us more sensitive to the sun. So if you are familiar with some of the oils that are sun sensitizing, the most sun sensitizing oil being bergamot, um, but also like lemon, grapefruit, less of an extent orange. Um, so all the citrus oils, and um, you know that already, you might actually be more sensitive. So maybe you've gone out with lemon on your skin and haven't noticed any kind of burning and don't think it's such an issue for you. Well, please be careful when you're pregnant or recommending this to pregnant women because I've heard some stories of really badly burned women who put like, um, you know, usually bergamot containing oils are, are the worst, but um, you just don't want to put them on your skin before going out into the sun but you can put them under your clothing or you can put them on at night. So please don't avoid using these wonderful oils. Those are all great for pregnancy. All the citrus ones are really nice and safe for pregnancy, except for the sun sensitivity. Um, so those are the only two like real safety precautions I'm gonna give at this point. If I mention oils that are contraindicated, I might just go into this for just a second, but I basically say most every oil that you would buy from a reputable, essential oil company will be safe for pregnancy or safe for the childbearing year, just maybe not at the time of the childbearing cycle that you would want to use it. So in other words, some oils are really wonderful for the childbearing year, but they're better at certain parts of the year than others. So I usually just try to um, warn people when I'm talking, if I mention something like peppermint, for example, in about half the women surveyed in a loose study on Facebook, and there were hundreds of them, but said that it reduced breast milk production. So that's one that I would say peppermint is my favorite oil for pregnancy. But when you're lactating, mom, you need to use a little bit of caution and just watch what it does to your body, whether it reduces breast milk. Same with spearmint. And um, a couple more, like clary sage is such an amazing oil for pregnancy. It has the ability to relax you. It's actually the most sedative of the oils that we have, while also making contractions more effective, like more efficient at their work um, and more regular at the same time. But when you're not ready to go into labor, it's better to avoid clary sage because, or it blends with clary sage, just because like if the baby's like not in the right position and you're like potentially stimulating the uterus, that can not be a good thing to be doing during pregnancy. So that's what I mean, like the oil itself is really not dangerous, um, except if you're using it at the wrong time. So please avoid clary sage until you're ready to go into labor. And you can also think of that a little bit for rose and jasmine, they have that effect as well of helping to regulate contractions and being more indicated for the end of pregnancy. So those are a few to look out for and just have some awareness on. Um, wintergreen and birch, a lot of people love. They love blends of this. It's really great for um, circulation, for pain, for inflammation. Uh, but it's also one that can have blood thinning tendencies. So almost every you know, scientific study or journal I've read or lists of like all my favorite people I follow have said don't use wintergreen or birch oils like that with methylsalicylate during pregnancy. Um, people love those oils. So I wish I had more um, recent studies so that I can know exactly how much is too much to use because I think it could be amazing during pregnancy. But at this point, I'm still saying, please wait until postpartum to use um, winter green or deep blue containing oils. And in the meantime, think of things like Siberian fir and peppermint and pepper, they're all penetrant oils, a lot like you would find uh, with wintergreen where it helps kind of to push other oils more deeply into your body. So those can be great if you have issues with back pain or with labor pain, but I'm going to go way more into labor pain in a few minutes. So I just wanted to start out with those sort of safety precautions. Um, but just know that they are very, very safe during pregnancy and there have been no records that I've researched and read on um, spontaneous abortion, things like that from using essential oils. So it's, if, you, if you're already using some of the ones I've talked about, I wouldn't feel like alarmed about that at all. I would just say maybe choose a different oil for that time in your pregnancy. So um, the first topic I wanted to talk about is anxiousness. This is a really um, commonly requested topic that I have talked about a few times already. Um, and also immunity. Those are the first two things I'm talking about. And 
a big part of why is just because of the time we live in right now with COVID and with the, um, everything going on with the world and the protests. And I mean, it's all an amazing time to live and witness, but I do think that there's a little bit more anxiousness and there's also a need to build the immune system up. So my favorite oils for anxiousness during pregnancy are neroli, sandalwood, frankincense, um, a grounding blend, and also bergamot. Um, so looking at anything from a tree is helpful for anxiety if you wanna be more grounded. So something like cypress could be good for that. Um, mm -hmm. And also frankincense, even though it's from resin, it's very grounding. It's also from a tree. So those ones are really nice and you can blend them with other things like frankincense and orange has a nice mix of being really grounding and kind of bringing you into the moment while the orange is more uplifting and can help to take off a lot of the stress and pressure you're experiencing. Um, so when people use oils for anxiety, one of the best ways to do it is through inhalation because that goes straight to your limbic system and can affect your mood and your thoughts. And I don't, some of you may have seen me do this before we started, but I usually just put the oils in my hand and kind of rub them together. Or just take a really nice deep breath and then there'll be oil left on your hands, which you can put on your body somewhere. So that's a great way to use these for anxiety. A lot of people have anxiousness um, before labor starts. And um, so diffusing something like peppermint frankincense or bergamot frankincense or sandalwood in the diffuser in the birth room is really great for those reasons. Um, when I talk about anxiousness, I, I don't mean like an anxiety disorder. I mean, just like natural general anxiousness about what your experience in, in your labor and all your body changes and just what's going on in the world, by the way. Um, for immunity, a lot of the same oils I just mentioned um, will be useful. So frankincense, again, is one of those oils that's good for everything um, and great for the immune system. Bergamot is one of the most antiviral and affordable <laughs> at the same time oils that we have. And we don't have research on COVID-19 and essential oils that I'm aware of yet, but I don't think there's any harm in using these antiviral immune stimulating oils and diffusing them in your environment. I think it can only do good. So um, hopefully we can find some good studies about essential oils and um, this virus because they've been shown effective against things like H1N1 um, and a lot of other um, complicated viral um, conditions. So anyway, I'm hopeful that this will um, help keep women strong and uplifted at the same time and keep their homes cleaned. So another one I like to diffuse and have around is Melissa. I would say that is the most antiviral essential oil that we have, but it's also one of the most expensive ones. <laughs> so if you have that around, then you might want to put it in a diffuser with a few other oils. Melaleuca is also really good just for bacterial infections and fungal infections, and it's a great one to have around and use topically. All these can also be just put on the bottoms of your feet at the first time of a cold, or, you know, like I said, they can all be put in a diffuser as well, but I would just include them in your life right now. So now I want to talk a little bit about labor pain with regard to what we know through research. So it's my belief that we get information from not just the scientific world, but information about natural health comes from lots of different directions and different forces in the world. And so one of them is science and evidence-based research is a big foundation from which I um, build my books and my e-courses and my talks, but it's also just one of them. Um, usually I find if I have antidotal um, evidence and information, which I get from my own personal experience and also from interviewing and speaking with midwives and other people in the birth community. Like, I think a lot of times you can get that first and then the research catches up to that. So I think that's equally valuable. And then um, having your own intuition about what to use can be helpful. And I don't think intuition is this like woo-woo spiritual thing that only some people can have. I think that our brains are amazing and hold so much information and we don't always know how to access it like in the moment and I but I do think that our minds are incredible and they can put together like make connections and link the dots um, that you may not think of initially for what you should use in the moment but you're but somehow your intuition comes in and says wait that oil would be good for this person 
So intuition is another of the, like the three ways you would gain information. Um, so that's science, intuition, and, and then like personal and anecdotal experience um, are also really important. So, um, but now I wanna talk about research studies and I'm not gonna talk about the details. If you want my bibliography and to look at some of the actual studies, if you're that kind of minded person, I'm happy to share that. So just send me an email and I'll send that to you. But um, I'm more gonna talk about which oils come up on top for uh, labor pain because I think it's important information and I found like going off of this when I was first learning this topic and helping people with this topic, um, it was helpful to start with those oils and to really see them work for people and then you can experiment with different things as well and learn from others. Um, so with labor pain, a lot of the research studies, I would say three quarters of them showed statistically significant reduction in the perception of pain during latent and early active labor phases. And I believe that the reason it was during those times primarily instead of like the later active labor phases is because the oils they were using were more designed and are more associated with lessening tension and stress. Um, and when you, I actually taught a class on pain one time, not labor pain, but it was, so important, like what I read in my research and, and what I learned from preparing for that class was how important it is to look at stress and tension um, as a means to lessen pain. So the more stress and tension you are, the higher you perceive pain, the higher level of pain you perceive. That's probably a better way to say that. Um, so these first oils that I'm going to talk about are the ones that were shown to be effective and most every study mentions all these oils, but I do believe that it has to do with lessening the experience of pain. Some people think that they um, decrease anxiety and tension because they are inhaled and go through the limbic system and they help to lower like epinephrine and, and your stress hormones as well. So I'm getting to that in just a moment. Um, so those oils include frankincense, Roman chamomile, lavender, citrus oils, jasmine, and clary sage, and rose, and geranium. And um, yeah, that's the list. <laughs> um, looking more specifically at individual rose in these studies is good for anxiousness. It was like the number one oil for anxiousness during labor and labor pain. So if you haven't experimented with rose, like that's definitely a precious oil that's more expensive as well, but that might be something to get your hands on if you have trouble with anxiousness. Other oils that were good for anxiousness and labor pain include geranium, lavender, and orange. So lavender um, was found to be effective for labor pain and also had the benefit of lowering elevated blood pressure, which is pretty awesome. And I don't recommend this um, being a substitute for medical care if you have high blood pressure during labor. Certainly don't recommend that, but it will not hurt you to try it. So it's a good thing to know about if, that, if it's starting to creep up and you wanna see if you have a natural means to help yourself. Uh, Jane Buckle did some research studies on this and she used a hand massage with lavender during labor for lowering blood pressure. Another oil that has research on lowering blood pressure during labor and helping with pain is geranium. So um, there's anecdotal evidence as well, more, well, I think that there was, Clary came up in one study for labor pain, but there's a lot of anecdotal evidence that I've gained from talking to people in the birth profession that had 10 births um, is for Clary Sage for labor pain and to um, help with slow to progress or erratic contractions. Um, I've also, I didn't ever see any studies on this and it was something that I tried to look up and find information about, but I was curious a couple of years ago if any essential oils could help bring on labor. And I didn't know the answer to that. And I, I've still not seen any research studies on this, but I have talked to um, some people, some midwives that have used geranium and lavender together to help bring on um, labor if it's late. So anyway, that's good to know. And how we apply those for that would be 
around the, the fun is like, so below the belly on the hips into the back. And I would also recommend doing something active. Like I was told by my sister-in-law to play tennis during my labor, my first labor to bring on labor. And it totally worked. I went into labor the night I played tennis. I went into labor that night at midnight, my water broke. And then I did that with my, all three of my kids. And I also played, since I had really slow, long labors, I also played tennis during my labors <laughs> with my kids, which I tell the story in my book. It's pretty funny, but I remember I have my second child was born in January and I went to the tennis courts in the rain. I live in Portland, Oregon in the rain, in my husband's um, flannel polar, jar, polar bear pajama bottoms and played tennis with him in the rain like at night. And then that worked so well to put me into like be the beginning of active labor that my midwife was there, of course, with me. But my midwife and I like walked halfway home together, which was actually like it's about a mile and a half to my house from where the tennis courts were. And I know I just like before crossing the street, I would just put my arms on her shoulders and have a contraction and then cross the street, you know, it was really funny. But so tennis and um, geranium and lavender, those are all good if you have stalled labor. And then for Clary Sage, I just like to give the caution not only to wait until you're at term and you know that it's safe to start um, having labor, but also just know that it works like Pitocin and it's a very strong, effective oil. Like a lot of people say, oh, they're, they're so pure. You know, when you work with high quality oils, like they won't cause any harm because they're so pure, they're so great. But I think as an herbalist, like being pure means they're so potent, which is just, it's incredible. And we should remember that they're very potent and strong and that we need to like respect them and like learn a little bit about how to use them. Um, and since it has the action of increasing labor and make it more effective like once your contractions get going and they're regular and they're effective it's better to take out clary sage at that point because we don't want to overdo it because and that can happen with clary sage so just keep that in mind if you recommend it to someone it has a purpose and it's for relaxation labor pain and making contractions more effective and stronger so make sure that once that happens then you just pull it out and then you stick with the other oils that we're talking about Okay, so copaiba, I actually don't have any experience with, but as sort of a oil that works on CBD receptor sites and one that's known for pain and anxiousness, I think it would be amazing during labor. So I'm curious if any try that, and I would love to hear about your personal experiences. You could post um, my Facebook group, Essential Oils for the Birth Kit, and we could have a discussion about that. I think that'd be really interesting. Um, so with active labor, as I said, I think that that just lessening stress and tension is not enough to make those oils we were talking about be effective on pain. That's my personal opinion. I think during active labor, um, there's a need for something more penetrating to be applied topically. Um, and also I think that it's good to have oils that help to boost energy um, because you need a lot of energy to get through active labor and also to get through second phase of labor of pushing the baby out. Um, there's, so there's ones that I like for that, which include peppermint, like again, it's just these penetrating oils that I mentioned earlier, but peppermint, white fur or Siberian fur, black pepper, um, oils of that nature that are like penetrating. And you can layer that with some of the relaxing oils. So like putting lavender on first and then putting peppermint on could be really effective or black pepper as well. And during labor, if you're using oils topically for labor pain, like definitely still consider skin irritability or sorry, not irritability, but like, I guess you don't want to have people be irritated by topically by the oils. And so consider that, but also like, this is labor. Like it's okay to like use more. If it's not working, you just use more oil. You know, if there's a little bit of redness to the skin, it might be worth it if it's going to help with the pain. So some of the ways I like to use these, especially in the early stages of labor is I like inhalation and bath a lot. And I say this a lot, but I recommend like finding your grandma's hanky or something to take to the birth and then having your oils. And what this does is, first of all, if you're at a hospital birth where you can't diffuse oils, it allows it to be like just in this space where the mom can use it and she can also choose when she wants to inhale it. So if she has enough, she can set it down. If she needs more, she can pick it up. So I like that controlled element to it. 
And um, I think baths are really nice. I wouldn't put essential oils in a labor tub. For one thing, they're usually lined with plastic and plastic and oils together leach toxins. So that's not, um, how you, I'm sorry, I said labor tub, but I actually mean birth tub. So if you have a labor tub or a bathtub, then I feel great about adding essential oils to that during labor. But if you're gonna actually birth a baby in the tub and it's a birth tub, that's when it's usually lined with plastic and then you have to think about the baby coming out into the water with really sensitive new skin that's a lot thinner than our skin. So um, if you only have a labor tub for delivering the baby and you wanna use essential oils, I would recommend a foot bath. Also having a massage and having the top part of your body out of the tub is perfectly fine. And it doesn't take that long. It takes like 20 minutes for oils to completely absorb into your body after you get a massage. You may smell them a little bit, but then at that point you could get into a birth tub. So just maybe think about adapting use. I've also had heard a couple stories of like one um, midwife put birch oil in the baby's birth tub and the baby was born just like atopic reaction, like bright red which is so sad. So let's just make sure to like not use the wrong. I mean, I don't think lavender would actually have that effect. It's probably, there probably have been a lot of babies born with lavender or grounding blend or something in the water, but I like to just err on the side of caution because of the stories I've heard about babies that have been born with an atopic response. Um, so I think that those oils I mentioned um, are better at working on pain receptor sites and also penetrating. And that's one of the reasons I would use them like that. And for the active labor oils, I think topical is really, really important compared to just aromatic. You can also do aromatic, that's great. But um, if you're gonna do a hot or cold compress, you can have that prepared ahead of time and put the oils in water with a, some kind of emulsifier like glycerin to mix them up. And you can just keep adding water and keep adding oils and keep adding ice or heat. I know that a lot of people don't like to use ice and cold during birth anymore. That's something that's trending out in the, the world of midwifery, but I had an ice bath for my back labor pain with one of my children and it was great. Like it really helped. Um, unfortunately, I didn't know about essential oils for my labors, but I have heard so many amazing things about how well this works for people. And also, like I said, I've read all the studies. So I hope that you'll take this information and share it with others and help to make people have a better birth experience because of using oils. I wanted to talk a little bit about now another topic, which is postpartum hormonal balance. This is a big deal um, for women to get their brains back and kind of feel normal again. Your body has to readjust and kind of your uterus is going back to its normal shape and size and your organs are resettling and you're sloughing off like a lot of water and fluid from your body. And so there's a couple oils that really support that. One is cypress and another is clary sage. And then there's some oils that help with hormonal balance in general. One of those is ylang ylang. And one of those again is clary sage. And so I made a blend for hormonal balance. And what it is is six drops of sandalwood, six drops of ylang ylang, 10 drops of clary sage, 16 drops of cypress, 10 drops of bergamot. And what I recommend people do is to just put that in, you know, like an empty essential oil bottle, or if you have a smaller kind of dram bottle, then you can mix it up together and then add it. Do it and it won't um, have a negative impact on the baby. Um, you can also put it in a roller bottle, like I mentioned before, and you, you know, about half the bottle could be full of the blend and half of a carrier oil. But I recommended, I would recommend using it on a regular basis for a while. That's very helpful. Um, so um, that's basically what I wanted to talk about, and I'm happy to take a few questions. I had intended to talk for about a half hour, and it's been about that amount of time. So anybody I don't know there's a lot of comments here I'm not sure if anyone had any questions there oh someone said I'll just answer the ones already here first hi Kim <laughs> um, okay I just left Young Living are there any companies that are comparable when talking about their purity um, I love doTERRA I'm a big fan of doTERRA and um, if you wanted to look on my website dailynectaressentials.com I have a page on quality and like all the reasons I love doTERRA and I'm also happy to chat with you about that Okay, um, and Kim says, Clary Sage is amazing, has been useful for clients in labor. 
Uh, and Kim has some really great nasal inhalers, Kim Kesselring. Um, so if anyone saw that, check those out. Um, does anybody have any questions for me? I'm not sure how to, that was, I guess those are my Facebook ones and then there's some chat 12. Okay, now there's questions over here. <laughs> Okay, what was the roller recipe for postpartum? Okay, I can give you that again. So for postpartum hormonal balance, um, six drops of sandalwood, and that can be either type of sandalwood, um, six drops of ylang ylang, 10 drops of clary sage, 16 drops of cypress and 10 drops of bergamot. And then I actually have another blend that I was going to share and I somehow skipped over it, but with nausea, I didn't really get to talk about nausea. I skipped over that note, but um, I know this is one of the first symptoms or discomforts of pregnancy and it was for me as well. And it's one that can be really, really severe and acute for some women and just kind of mild for others. And I, I am a, also a nutritionist and I do think that diet has a lot to do with how you can help yourself with this. And people need different things. Like for some people, it's a hard boiled egg. Um, it's really common to hear people recommend like crackers and like eating every few hours as well. So there's different ways to handle that with nutrition that you should look into and also making sure that, um, the diet is very healthy. But the oils that I like the best are ginger, spearmint, and peppermint. And I'm a huge fan of ginger rubbed into the abdomen for nausea during pregnancy. So definitely try that if you haven't yet. It's a gentle oil. It is a very warm oil. So it would be nice to mix it with something cooling. The citrus oils are cooling. So something like orange ginger is really common or lemon ginger, bergamot ginger. If you put bergamot and ginger and you're rubbing into your abdomen a lot, that could also help with um, tonifying the uterus because that oil is a little bit like raspberry leaf tea in that it um, helps to tonify. And so if you get tired of drinking raspberry leaf tea, which I definitely did, I will never drink it again, um, then try the ginger with bergamot and just put it in your abdomen a lot and don't expose it to the sun if it's sunny since bergamot's photosynthesizing. I also really like peppermint and spearmint. For some people, peppermint's too strong. So if that's how you feel about it, then definitely give spearmint a try. And if you don't have a diffuser, like I've heard, it works pretty well to put a hot bowl or pan of water by the bed and put spearmint in the pan and it can you know, kind of diffuse at bedtime and help you to not feel as nauseous in the night. And um, you can also inhale those. There's um, nasal inhalers are really nice, like what Kim was saying, where you just open them up and keep the scent in there and smell them when you need them. I have a blend that I like because my feeling, I mean, for nausea, sometimes I like to just keep it really simple and do one oil. But my belief about digestive system oils is that having more of them together is more effective than using single oils for most other digestive complaints. So, and they can, this blend that you make, like can be used for everything from like constipation to diarrhea, to heartburn, um, to lots of different, like to nausea as well. But I like that it's different than if you go into a drugstore and you have diarrhea, then you need to get one allopathic treatment. And if you have constipation, you need to get another one. And you end up with this whole cabinet full of just single remedies that kind of push the physiology in one direction. Whereas if you have a blend, then you're actually just supporting the whole system and it can be really effective and, and nourishing for your digestive system. So that's why I like to use a blend. So here's the blend that I came up with. It's in my blend booklet, um, but this is four drops of ginger, five drops of peppermint or spearmint, five drops of lavender, and 14 drops of orange, or you could use another citrus oil if you like. I like orange a lot for digestion, however. That's another one of my blends I wanted to share. Oh, and I wanted to talk about some of the things that Oil Life has available to you 
um, that I've produced. Um, one is my brand new book called Essential Oils for Maternal Wellness. And I'm really excited about this. I told you a couple stories from my experience. I did not have the oils when I was having kids, but I have three kids and I have a lot of experience with the discomforts of pregnancy. And also with, you know, just my clinical, I've been studying herbs for 25 years, for 15, I've been in clinical practice and mostly working with pregnant women. Um, and then the last few I've been just writing and, and sharing in this way. But so this book has everything you need to know about like dilutions and safety and what to do if you have a hospital birth and you're using medications. And, um, and then I tell short stories about my own experience. So if you've never had a baby before, you can kind of read the book from front to back and like learn about transition phase and phase two labor and like kind of what to expect. And, um, and then also like what oils to use, like, what would I have done if I would have known about oils when I was going through all this? I have so much insight into that now that I wish I would have had. So this is my way of sharing this with everyone. Um, there's also little pieces of information about nutrition, um, which is, you know, I worked with women, pregnant women with nutrition for many years. So I hope that you'll enjoy that, that book and get it through Oil Life. And Oil Life also has um, a guidebook that I don't have any of on hand or I would be showing it to you. But it's, this is, it's about this size, it's like A to Z size, and it's, it's less of a story and more of just a, you look up whatever you need to know about how to dilute, which ways to use them, which oils to use. And that's called, um, well, that's called Birth Kit Essentials, sorry. Um, that's, if you just look up my name, Stephanie McBride, you'll see these on Oil Life. And then finally, I have an e-course that is something I was going to try to show you here. Hold on a second. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen. Oh, I'm disabled from that. <laughs> anyway, um, my e-course has eight modules and they go from when you first conceive um, through different phases of labor and pregnancy to postpartum to infant care. And it's a series of like webinar talks and you can go at your own pace and you get a certificate of completion when you finish and also, oh, thank you. <laughs> she enabled me to share my screen. So if you are a birth professional or a massage therapist, I think massage therapists can do this. Um, but people in the birth world can um, get CEU credits from the class as well. And I also just wanted to show you on my website here, I have this just free like tool where you can get on and look up different oils, um, recommended oils, the top oils for birth and babies. And this is a pretty good list. So if you don't know which oils to buy or which ones you might use, it's separated by phase. And then you can click in. I'm not completely finished with it yet, but I hope that you'll find it a useful tool. And I'll talk about like the top uses, why it's useful in maternity and precautions. So um, please check that out if you're interested in knowing more about which oils to buy. Um, so yeah, that's all for that information. And let's see if there's any other questions. I've been dealing with a great deal of cramps. Have you tried? So this person um, says, I'm eight weeks pregnant and I've been dealing with a great deal of cramps. I've been using Roman chamomile and lavender, but I'm still cramping. I really like ginger for cramps. Have you tried? I'm wondering if you've tried ginger. That's, I love, that oil's amazing. I had, I don't know if you've ever like eaten while lying down and had like spasms in your esophagus before, but it's horrible. It's like just a terrible, terrible feeling. And I had that happen recently. And I just was like, what oil, what oil? You know, it was, I could hardly even walk, but I grabbed my ginger because I know I love that for um, cramps in postpartum and for also birthing the placenta. It's really good and traditional, but um, I put it on my chest and just like two seconds later, they went away. I think it's amazing um, as an antispasmatic. So check that out. Have you heard any issues related to diffuser inhalation once the baby's born due to their small lungs? Yes, um, just as I mentioned, having, do not have it, the baby in like the shower, like the bathroom with the shower going with the essential oils. That, that is where people have had concern um, with inhalation. And it's also, do you know what they say for pets, how don't trap your, your pets in a room with a diffuser? for a lot of the time. So I would just suggest like having it be a situation where you're walking through the house and like occasionally you have a diffuser going. I always say for infant care, if you don't need 
to do anything with the oils. Like if there's nothing wrong, then just use them for yourself, but don't go out of your way to use them for your baby unless there's like something like diaper rash or teething or um, you're working on the umbilical cord um, healing. What would you, okay. Oh, here's the rest. What would you recommend for dealing with um, C-sections? So I'm not sure if you mean for healing or preparing, but um, that's a great question. And I really like the, the oils that are good for, for cellular proliferation, like frankincense. Um, Helichrysum is anti-inflammatory. It's kind of like the oil Arnica, if you know about Arnica, the homeopathic. Those two are really nice with either like those with lavender or geranium and you can do equal parts. Um, so that's really nice to put just on an open wound or um, you can also prepare your skin ahead of time by putting that on ahead of time. Um, I know that there are a lot of different um, things that can come up with C-section. I think that those could also be nice for, heal for um, the pain element of it with frankincense. That's the, the top thing I would, that would come to my mind unless there's something more specific. Okay, would you diffuse? Would you diffuse the postpartum blend besides using them? Yes, definitely diffusion. I think anytime I'm looking at hormonal imbalance, I want people to do it like regularly, like small amounts of it, like several times a day um, for a while, for maybe like three weeks. That's the best way to use it. Um, so that's how I would do it. If you do it in a roller bottle, just do it frequently. It would be good to do both actually, because you're going to be with your baby a lot possibly. And you don't necessarily want the baby to constant have like all the time the diffusion for hormonal balance. So maybe do like some diffuser and some roller bottle, but it's a really nice blend for all that. And I will also mention that knitting, if you know how to knit and you have the time to sit down and knit, that's a great thing for helping to get your brain back from um, delivery and getting, you know, baby brain, they call it. But my told me about that she's amazing um cool okay so um do you have any question for getting pregnant research yes i i'm actually writing a little guidebook on on uh fertility and and pregnancy so it's not ready yet um but i uh, will tell you that the main things that i'm looking at include hormonal balance. So you could actually use that blend that I just mentioned. Um, detoxification, that's going to be really important for getting pregnant. Um, also like boosting fertility. So like sandalwood is really good for men. I like the idea of putting it in the guy's deodorant or in like bath soap or something so that they just are using it a lot. Um, and yeah, there's, there's quite a number of other things just but are more individualized so i'll have those as my general things and then you can go in and do the individualized but it's not ready yet but please um if you want to be up to date on that then join my facebook group essential oils for the birth kit i always post my when i come out with new things do you think as pregnant women should use essential oils internally this is a bit of a controversial topic um i like when there's formulations like vitamins and there's been good studies i'm totally on board with it because it's measured out and it's been like at least tested in the public and like recorded and there's no harm that's been done. I don't like women just dropping, you know, like, oh, I'm nauseous. I'm going to take my bottle of peppermint and just whatever I feel like it, like self, like self medicate, I guess you can't really say medicate, but um, so in general, like I'm, I mostly feel like it should be avoided because I don't feel really safe just saying to everyone yeah go ahead and use it it's safe because in some cases it may not be like if someone's had a series of miscarriages and then they're in the first trimester like even if the oils don't cause a miscarriage they could get blamed for it which isn't good for the essential oil world and also we just don't have the research and when you take oils internally they're eight to ten times stronger than when you use them topically so and they do cross the placenta a lot of them. So um, I would say I'm not a big fan. Uh, one exception is lemon because people have been eating lemon rind in Greece and in different parts of the world for centuries during pregnancy and not. So I know that since the essential oil comes from the rind, it's basically the same thing to take the oil. Um, that being said, you don't want to do a lot of heavy detoxification during pregnancy or even when nursing because you don't want to detoxify into your bloodstream 
when um, you're pregnant for the sake of protecting the baby. So a little bit of lemon, I think is good. Never put lemon in plastic if you're gonna drink it. I would do more of like making my own hummus or guacamole or something and putting it in that um, more as a flavoring or maybe like one drop in my, my water bottle occasionally, that kind of thing. I hope that answers your questions. So if there's any more questions, I'll wait for a few more seconds, but I think that's everything I was going to share today. And I really appreciate you being on the call. And thanks everyone who said they enjoyed the talk and, and thank me, I, I'm really happy to have done this today and hope to see you again in the future. Bye everybody. Thanks. So